Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already ablazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son and a son against his father. A mother against her daughter, a daughter against her mother, a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, come by the most powerful means of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. Today, we hear a couple of utterances of Jesus, that he comes to light the world on fire. There's a couple of meanings to that. There's the fire of his love, or the passion of the apostles. The road to Emmaus say, weren't our hearts burning when he was opening up the scriptures? It's one sort of fire. And there's literal fire. Fire and brimstone in the Old Testament. Revelations, things that are talked about in there. But he talks about the division of families in that, that he didn't come to bring peace. Because what happens when you are righteous in the truth, Many, many people will oppose what you do and what you say. And the reason why is you step on their sinfulness. Oh, you should have heard me the first year I was a priest. And I came in and I talked about it. It was a holy day of obligation on Friday. And then Sunday, we had like 3% that came for the holy day. So I did the Ten Commandments. On, the Ten Commandments reading was on Sunday, and I said, these are the Ten Commandments. Everything else is a venial sin, but if you miss Mass on a holy day, you should come to communion. Oh, did the letters go to the bishop? Right? <laughs> so I stepped on people's sinfulness. And that's what happens when you live in righteousness, when you live in the Spirit of God, when you pray, people will react to you, and you didn't even do anything. And it's just the spirit within them, the spirit of the world that gets control. And you're trying to live above that in the spirit of God, devoted to his love, his peace, his joy. And certain people will be upset by that. You have the famous mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, right? I mean, that's like cats and dogs going back, way back, right? They just don't get along. I am surprised when a daughter to the law says, I love my mother in law. What? Because that's against the norm, right? Because daughter in law took my baby boy. That's what I always hear. And that's hard for me. So, this division, when Jesus walks this world, think about the Pharisees, the scribes, the sinners, the people coming against him, testing him. That resistance that he got when he came into the world, to the point where they offered him the promise. They said, we don't want you anymore. You're going to die because it's better for one man to die than all of us do. And they killed him. So there's a song that says that we read as priests, and it's a beautiful song that I reflect on it all the time. It says, don't worry when they hate you, because they hated me first. Brothers and sisters, what does it take in this life right now to survive in what we're going through? We live in a very strange culture. Violence is coming up, crimes coming up, food shortages are happening, gas prices, well, they're coming down, but we have a November election coming up, that's probably why. But all these things are out of whack, right? And we're going, what's going on with our world? It's just a different world than we grew up in. And it's funny because I ask a lot of people in the confessional when I say, have you known the world will get any better? From the 
the time you were five years here or to five years there, has the world gotten any better? The answer is 100% no. Then don't expect it to get any better. The world's not going to get better. What's going to get better is our orientation to God, our faith in God, our love of God. And the things in our life become more important to us. Why? Because we realize the truth. And the truth is that this world, it's an illusion. We're running our tails off for money, for possessions, for this, for that. And that's the things that God said are not important. He says to the rich young man, sell everything you have and follow me. And the boy hung his head and he left because he had many possessions. That's us. That is us. Now, I'm not saying that's bad or those things are bad, but see them as tools of the kingdom of heaven. When you look at your wealth or you look at your house or your car as a tool of salvation, then it becomes part of God. It's given to him. And in that, you know, people go to me, you know, you got a really nice truck in front of me. Thank God. But it gets me from one place to another. It's a tool. Imagine being an escort. Right? So, in this, there's a fear of being, having that opposition hitting us in the world. So sometimes we remain silent with the righteousness and truth, even with our children, even with our adult children. If a, a grandchild is not baptized or a child's not baptized, sometimes we sit back and we go, well, I don't want to interrupt the fray. But the thing is, is because of your spirit, come forth and pray for that child. Pray for the, the father and mother of that child to get, make them, in a sense, to have the grace come upon them so they realize this is important. Because our spiritual life is so important to us. Our orientation to God is so important. What is he asking for? He's asking for humility. He's asking for faith. And he's asking us to love him in return. Those three things. And if we do that, we could be all right with God. And then the world, in a sense in which we live in, we live in the world but not of it. We stay oriented to him. But what stops us all the time is fear. Last night I was at the next Columbus. I had... Someone will come to me and say, Father, are you a priest? I said, yeah, I had a chef's jacket on. Right? And uh, he says, why aren't you wearing a collar? I said, because I have a chef's jacket on. And I have another layer of that. I'm not going to wear another layer. He said, you should be a collar. And I said, okay, I get that. But let me tell you a story. Right? I was at Margaret Mary in Milwaukee, and I was in full cast. At that time, I had long hair, big hair. Right? My hair was a lot darker at the time sitting with a purple stole, sitting on my chair, just kind of reading, doing some spiritual reading. All of a sudden, the door comes in. Now, we had a separation where someone could go behind the screen, kind of like St. Mary's, if you could have been in there, or you could walk around going face to face. So the woman comes around, and she comes around, she takes one look at me, and she goes, no, 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 no. <laughs> and she walked out, she hit the door, she hit the front door, she was gone. Sometimes that fear hits us to such a point where we're afraid, in a sense, of God. And is it me? Well, that's probably why I don't wear clerics on public all the time, because people will be afraid of me and throwing extra bits, right? But the thing is, is that fear of God, that fear of His love. Because what He wants us to do is He wants us to receive that love. And how can we love anybody else if we cannot receive love? The thing that hurts me the most as a priest in this culture right now is the younger generations don't know how to receive love as well as the older generation. And in that, there's a victimhood in a sense, but they always take the scars of their heart and they put it out front and say, I've suffered. I'm the victim at this point. And when you try to love them, they push you away. Just imagine yourself as a teenager. We did this all the time, right? We pushed our parents away. We forced them to come forward and say, I love you. And some of us can get it until we're 20, 22 years old. But the generation now is we don't know what to do. And they're listening to the world. Imagine what that's doing to them. We need to step up in righteousness. We need to love our children. We need to love our 
young adults, we need to love even those in their 30s and 40s. And if you haven't said it, parents, if you haven't said it, grandparents, tell them you love them. Because that may be the only time they hear it. But you are the representation of God, the Father. And where they hear that, they hear that they are loved. They can now start to receive that. And that's what God needs, is for us to receive his love. And humility so that we can give it to the world. Let us thank you.